Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 2, October 2023. You may use a calculator, let's start right now. Question 1. Write 2.3 hours in minutes. So converting from hours to minutes, just multiply by 60. That will be 138 minutes. That's our answer. Question 2. Write a number in each box to make the statement correct. Dash divided by dash is 2 by 5. Well, we can see the fractions 2 by 5, so we can obviously write it as 2 divided by 5 is 2 by 5. We can also write 4 divided by 10 or 6 divided by 15, but, well, I'm just writing 2 by 5. This is also correct. Question 3. Write the name of a regular polygon with rotational symmetry of order 3. We have a regular polygon with rotational symmetry order 3. That means the number of sides it has is the same as the order of rotational symmetry which is three sides. So the answer is equilateral triangle. If you write triangle alone, it's not enough because given you need to write the regular polygon and equilateral is the only way a triangle can be regular. Question four. Alma translates a shape on a square grid. Take all the statements that are always true. The new shape is the same size as the original shape. This is true. Translation does not change its size. The new shape is a rotation of the original shape. Well, this is never true. Translation never rotates the shape. The new shape is the same shape as the original shape. This is true. Translation never changes the shape of an object. The new shape covers part of the original shape. Well, this is not always true. This could be true if the translation is small enough, but then it's not always true. If the translation is extremely large, then, or at least if it's larger than the side lengths of the shape then this is false. So it's not always true, therefore we can't take it. Question five. Draw a circle with radius of four centimeters and the center of it all. Use a ruler and compasses. So use your ruler to measure out your compasses at a length of four centimeters, which means the distance from the head and the pencil has to be four centimeters. Now place the head at O and the pencil somewhere around at the four centimeters. Now you can draw the circle around O without moving the head from O. And you'll get a circle with radius 4 centimeters. That's our answer. Question 6. Complete the table of equivalent values. Fraction, 1, 1 by 5. Decimal. So we just convert 1 by 5 to a decimal, that's 0 0.2. And now we add 1, which is the whole number part, so 1.2. Now percentage, just multiply the decimal by 100, so that's 120%. Now 30%, in percentage will become 0 0.3 as a decimal because we divide by 100 to go from percentage to decimal. Now a fraction we can find by noticing that this 3 is in the tenth place. Tenth, which is right after the decimal point. And that means it's 3 tenths, 3 by 10. Now we have the decimal 0 0.54. So this is actually 54 by 100 because we have 54 hundredths. Right? But then we can write this in a simplified form as 27 by 50. If we divide 2 on both sides from 54 by 100. Now percentage, we multiply the decimal by 100, so we get 54%. That's our answer. Question 7. Point A is plotted on the coordinate grid. A, write the coordinates of point A. Well, we can see that the x value is minus 3 and the y value is 2. So it's just minus 3 comma 2. B, plot the point with coordinates 3 by 2 comma minus 4. So 3 by 2 is 1 and a half, which means this is exactly in the middle of 1 and 2 on the x-axis. So it has 1.5, 3 by 2, it's on this line. And minus 4 is the y-coordinate, so it's on this line as well. So the point is on x equals 1.5 and y equals minus 4, it is over there. That's our answer. I'll just label this as part B. Question 8. A. Where the common multiple of 12 and 18. So we realize it. 12 times 3 equals 36. And 18 times 2 is also equal to 36. So you can write 36 as a common multiple. There's actually a few more. For example, 72, 108, 144. And it goes on. The list goes on, of course. There's many different common multiples and actually you can say infinite common multiples of these two. If you write any one of them, it's correct. 
b y the common factor of 12 and 18 well every number has common factor of 1 but then this does not really count in common factors because it generalized for every single pair of numbers right so instead of writing 1 we can write either 2 3 or 6 any one of these three numbers are fine since they are common factors of 12 and 18. The easiest way to find out is by writing 12 is equal to 2 times 6, 12 is equal to 3 times 4, and yeah, 12 equals 1 times 12. Now, this is for 12. Now, for 18, we get 18 equals 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and 1 times 18, of course. And there are three factors which are repeated in both numbers, as we can see. So, we use any one of the three and write it down here. That's our answer. Question 9. Oliver predicts that girls have longer names than boys. He designs four questions to investigate the prediction. Take the question that is least helpful for his investigation. What is your name? Well, if you ask someone what is your name, then let's say they reply Sanjay. That means that it has six letters. You can count this on your own. So this is partly helpful. Of course, if you ask how many letters are in your name, then if you ask this to Sanjay, he will say six. Right? So this is very useful since he will say that exact number and you don't really have to count it yourself. How do you spell your name? Well, this question is also partly useful since Sanjay, for example, would reply S-A-N-J-A-Y, right? And therefore, you would just count the number of letters he spells. So you'll find out the length of the name, which is what he wants to know. But then, is your name long or short? Well, let's say Sanjay says it's short. What are you going to make of this question? Like, how many letters is it there? Well, if you say your name is short, it could mean even three letters. It could mean seven letters. How do you know which one it is? It could be anything in between as well. Four, five, six. Even someone who has eight letters could think the name is short. It's not really very helpful for this investigation. You can't know the exact number of letters in someone's name. Also, let's say a boy says that the name is short and a girl also says the name is short. Then how would you make anything of this information? Of course, this will just be a waste of time, of course. That's why it's the least helpful question. Question 10, calculate 2 by 3 plus 1 by 4. We can write this as 8 by 12 plus 3 by 12, which is 11 by 12. And that will be our answer. We multiplied this by 4 on both sides, and we multiplied 1 by 4 by 3 on both sides. So we get these two fractions. Adding them up, we get 11 by 12. Question 11. Take all the shapes that could have an obtuse angle. Notice that they have bolded could. So it does not have to have it, but it could have an obtuse angle, which means it's not 100% there in every of that shape. Scalene triangle. Yes, it could have, because I'll give you an example. This is a scalene triangle, right? None of the sides have the same length, none of the angles are the same. This is obtuse, so it could have an obtuse angle. Rectangle, this is a no, because rectangles always have 90 degree angles, and four of them. And 90 degrees is not obtuse. Parallelogram, this can have obtuse angles, and it's not a could, it actually must have obtuse angles. Because parallelograms, if they are not rectangles, will look something like this. Then, these two are obtuse, right? Therefore, it must have obtuse angles. And the pentagon could also have obtuse angles. I'll tell you how. Well, you might think that a pentagon would not have obtuse angles by the look of it. But actually, for example, this pentagon here, it has obtuse angles and it has five sides, so it's a pentagon with obtuse angles. Well, even if it looks like it does not have obtuse angles, it definitely does. Every single pentagon has at least one obtuse angle. That's the answer. Question 12. Complete the statement using the correct word. In the number 7.419, 9 represents 9 dash. There's actually 9 thousands. Because it is in the thousands place. Question 13. Here's part of a sequence, 23, 17, 11, dot, dot, dot. The sequence continues in the same way. 
Joel being around, all the numbers there in the sequence. So every time we go to the next term, we subtract 6. So if we subtract 6 again, we'll get 5. And then minus 1, minus 7. We could go really far. We could go as far as anyone wanted. Minus 25, minus 31, minus 37, minus 43, minus 49. And I'm going to go only till here so that I can go through all the options here. There's no 7 in these terms. There's no minus 2 in these terms. But there is a minus 7, so we can draw around that. There's no minus 35. We can see it's minus 31, then immediately minus 37. So there's not there. And minus 49 is the last term I wrote, which is why I continued all the way up till here. Well, that's our answer. If you do not want to do this this way, of course, there is one more way you, you could use. You can realize that all these numbers are one below a multiple of 6. And this continues on both the positive side and negative side. So if you take the positive side, that's 12. 6 times 2, right? So if we subtract 1 from this, that'll be 11. And that's what we got. Now, if we take the negative side, minus 12, okay, let's just say it's there, and this is 6 times minus 2, right? That means if we subtract 1 from this, we get minus 13. That's also there. So if we calculate which of these are 1 below a multiple of 6, you'll get only these two. That's our answer. Question 14. Draw a line to match each number to the correct description. 1 36 tenths. That's simply 13.6. Is it greater than or less than 13.56? It's greater than because the tenth place is larger. Now as for the second one, 1064 hundredths. That's 10.64, which is clearly less than 13.56. Now 125 tenths and 42 hundredths. That's 12.5 plus 0 0.42, which is 12.92. This is less than 13.56. 1 10 and 75 tenths. That's going to be 1 10, 75 tenths. 17.5, which is clearly greater than 13.56. 1 10, 40 tenths and 36 hundredths. That's going to be 1 10, 40 tenths, that's just four ones, and 36 hundredths. 14.36, which is once again clearly greater than 13.56. This will be our answer. Question 15. Question 15. A clock needs one battery to work. It lasts six weeks. A. Calculate the number of batteries that are needed for the clock to work for one year. Well, one year is approximated as around 51 to 52 weeks. And the number of batteries needed is going to be 52 or you can use 51 in this case the result actually does not matter so divide by 6 and then let's get our calculator to do that 52 divided by 6 to get 8.66 dollar dot and because we cannot use like half a battery or in this case 0 0.66 of a battery if you have a full battery right therefore you can round this up to 9 batteries and that'll be our answer. Let's go to part B. A box contains 30 batteries. These are used in the clock. Write the number of whole weeks that the clock will work. Well, one battery lasts six weeks. So 30 batteries will last 30 times 6, which is 180 weeks. That's the answer. 